Torch Together, Lent 2022, Week 6. Presented by Mike Townsend. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's lovely to be back here from Blowy Scarborough, but I've actually come to Blowy Fleckney, so it's quite windy everywhere today. However, I'm talking about a very important subject, which I spoke about yesterday up in Scarborough with the Torch Together group, who are, by the way, enjoying themselves now in Scarborough Fair. So, but I won't sing the song. Now, I, don't, I hope you're getting on okay with the uh, the book that we're doing. Um, it's, it's good, isn't it? Um, lots of interesting studies and things. And we're getting through Lent and Easter is rapidly approaching. And we're in the penultimate week of, and it also begins with P for something else. Because, you know, I've never heard of this week of Lent before. It's a new one on me. It's called Passion Week. Yes, Passion Week. And I'd never heard of Passion Week before. Now, I wonder what you think of when I say that word, passion. What is passion? Well, maybe you'll answer. I asked this question yesterday, actually. Uh, some people said fruit. Anyone like passion fruit? Another said, well, a great display of love. And I, I did hear a kiss going on. Anyway, you never know what happens there. But it, it is a, a real sense, a deep sense, or an, eff, an effervescent sense, or an overflowing sense of love. And it's not just a superficial thing. I do believe passion speaks deeply. And we'll be looking at Jesus' passion. And I believe that Jesus has deep-rooted love or passion for us. And we'll be looking at them in three areas. Jesus' followers are the first, and then Jesus' friends, and then Jesus' passion for us. So, first of all, we're going to... Oh, dear, I haven't got someone reading the passage. Oh, I'm total failure here. Um, I've sent Edith. She's back downstairs resting. Uh, I was going to get her to read the passage. So now, just a minute while I get the passage up. Um, I'm really, really sorry about this. This is, this is what happens with coming on um, basically straight into it from, from a journey. Uh, it's John I'm looking for, John chapter 11. And I'll start reading at verse 3. So there we go. Forgive me. This is about Lazarus. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one who you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and his sisters. And then later on, we read. Jesus had been speaking with about, about, oh, I've got to get the right verse up. Right. After he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, his own death. But his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So, sorry, of Lazarus' death. So then he told him them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad because I, that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. And then we go further down. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. 
And then we go on uh, down to verse um, 31. When the Jews had been with Mary in the house, comforting King Her, noticing how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved. Where do you wait? Where, sorry, where have you laid him? He asked, come and see, Lord, Mary said. And uh, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now, I think that's as far as I'll go with the reading at the moment. I'm, I'm sorry I've lost my assistant. But the first thing I want us to think about is how Jesus has a real passion for us and his disciples, his followers. They waited. Why did they wait? Why did Jesus make them wait? I don't know if you've ever been in any training or anything like that, but training is quite a skill, quite an art, and quite a, a thing to survive. But if we just sit and copy and do what they do on the screen or something, or copy what they're doing on um, weaving or something like that, so if we just watch and don't participate, just don't get engaged with it, most of a lot of computer training is sit down and watch a video. When you get home at night, what do you remember? Nothing. What did they do then? Oh, I've got no idea. And, and I remember learning this very early on. I was leading a, a group of adventurers, uh, lots of young lads actually, and we were in a competition building rafts. And I, I said to my lads, Come on, lads, we're going to build a good raft and we are going to win. And we got the, the instructions and I, and I said, come on then, let's lash it all together, the drums and things. And we, we did. We made a wonderful raft. It was wonderful. It floated well. And we went out on the River Severn and we were going, we were ahead of the pack. But one of the lads said to me, uh, Mike, what does this rope do? And he pulled it. And do you know what happened? The raft fell apart because all the drums came off and he pulled what was a sort of rope that could release everything. And I had not remembered one important aspect of the training. And so we lost ignominiously. There we were. We were all in the seven. Now, so Jesus, I believe, is giving them a, an example. Um, so why did he wait? And then why did he tell them? that they were going to go and, uh, and get, uh, see what happened. Then Jesus plainly said, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. And that's the lesson. They had to learn practically that God could help them. Jesus could have rushed off and just helped Lazarus get healed and they wouldn't have learned anything. And sometimes God leaves us in difficult and hard situations with hard lessons to learn in a practical way that God is with us. And maybe you are personally going through something tough at the moment. And well, what I'm saying is, that God will teach us through those tough times. And quite often when we look back through our lives, some of the times we've learned the most from God are when things are really tough. Let's just pause and bring those tough times to God. Yes, Jesus got a passion for us to learn how to follow him. And in verse 40, it says, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Because they saw Lazarus come out of the tomb and walk away. Second one is passion for friends. We learned about the sisters sending to Jesus, 
saying, the man you love, Lazarus, is sick. And Jesus really, really did love Lazarus. And we know how much Jesus loved Lazarus because, well, the shortest verse in the Bible, you know it, Jesus wept. He had real love, real passion, a real depth of feeling. And the crowd, those round said, see how he loved him. That's what they said. And Jesus also loved the sisters. He had a deep care for them. Weeping Mary took Jesus to the tomb. And look at them. They're all weeping. There's Mary and Martha, the crowds. Jesus, God himself, is weeping. Does God weep with us? I'm going to read you a bit from Hebrews to say that really God does have a deep understanding for us. We have a great high priest who has gone to heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us cling to him and never stop trusting him. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same temptations we do. Yet he did not sin. So let us come with boldness to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it most. And so Jesus did love them and he loves you and me. He has a care for his friends. He's got a deep passion for you and for me. Let's pause and bring some of our sadness and sorrows. And then finally, Jesus has a passion for us, not just as his friends, but actually for us. Did Jesus stay weeping? No. Jesus actually did something about it. He had active passion. It wasn't just passive. He didn't just stay there weeping. Jesus did something about it. He took action. He went to a Lazarus tomb. And I've been there. <laughs> I think I told you last year about it. It's a very, very deep tomb. It's a long, long way down. And Edith and I were, got down there and it was very, very hot. And we had a little service down there. And then it was time to come out again. Uh, but uh, we were able to get out. Um, well, we started to go, but there was a, an American, a rather overweight, rotund American. And he couldn't get out. The exit was so narrow. The entrance and exit was so, it was one, one way, it, it, it was so narrow. He just couldn't. It was so hot there. He swelled up so much. He couldn't, couldn't get go. And so they, they stripped off all the clothes that were decent to get off. They rubbed him over with fat and things or stuff to, to try and get him through. And then they told him to sit down, have a cold drink. They got cold towels. And then gradually, there was, he was able to get out, thank goodness. He shrunk a bit and could, could get out. But it, it is deep and it's tough to get out. But it's even tougher to rise from the dead. But if we trust Jesus, we can rise. We have that hope. Lazarus, come out, Jesus called. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I did this so for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me, that they may might believe. And out walked Lazarus. There he was. Uh, and uh, we then go on to learn about Mary, who anointed the feet of Jesus later on, next chapter. And, and here's what Jesus has done for us, his friends. Passion. Rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is real passion, isn't it? This is real passion. And yesterday, after I spoke, we sang this song. Oh, to see the pain written 
on your face, bearing the awesome weight of sin. Every bitter thought, every evil deed, crowning your blood-stained brow. This, the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us. Took the blame, bore the wrath. We stand forgiven at the cross. And I think that's a hallelujah on the part of our understanding of Jesus' passion, Jesus' deep passion for us. But do we love Jesus enough? Have we got enough passion to share the passion of Jesus with others? Because what happened? Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. Let's enjoy the passion of Jesus, his deep love, and let's share that love this Easter time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on our Torch Together Lent group. If you'd like any more information about Torch, do give us a ring on 01858 438 260. Goodbye and God bless.